I'm going to quote the great Gex from Gex Enter the Gecko and say, it's deja ouch all over again. Welcome back to Bantland Boulevard, where the bandits lose in Denver. Surprise, surprise, shocking, shocking. 16 to 10 in game two. This series is knotted up at one. Colorado, what do you know could get a convincing win against the Buffalo Bandits? But we still have one more game to prove ourselves. Maybe we can actually get a convincing win against Colorado Mammoth. But we're here to recap this game that happened this afternoon, Memorial Day. Um, Watching this game from Southern Tier, and you're watching it from where was it, Tony? Uh, Thirsty Dog Saloon in Depew. I'm sure there wasn't a lot of happy people there. Mm-mm. From from time to time, there was some happy happiness in the crowd at the game we or at the at Southern Tier Brewery where we were at. But I mean, for the most part, this is just a flat out embarrassing game. I mean, and this is complete deja vu from what happened last year. One one series tie, best two out of three, absolute mm-hmm. garbage all the way around. Offensively, defensively, goaltending, officiating, you name it, the whole nine. It was all garbage. Yeah, basically all I could say is that this was uh, a possible wake-up call again, like we're reliving back since last year. And this is what we don't understand why, after going gun-ho in game one yet again, and then all of a sudden changing just because we're in Colorado. You have the right mindset. You guys even said it in your post-game after game one. We're not satisfied with our game, even though we took that game one. But you're with that kind of game too. How can anyone be satisfied? You sound like you fans? sound like fucking used car salesmen. I mean, you sound, like, you sound like politicians. You tell us what we want to hear, and you do the complete freaking opposite. And by the way, you're listening to Bay 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 Boulevard, Game Two Recap. Tony Lamonica, yeah. aka Box at Ninety Eight TL, on this side. My brother Jake is joining me for the first time on the show, and of course, I'm one of your co-hosts, Trevor Howard. But here's the thing: they said all the right things. They didn't act upon anything. And yes, there are a couple outlying factors that I really don't want to hear from the fans. I don't want to hear no Josh Burton. We won half of our games in our regular season without this guy. I don't want to That's hear correct. I don't want to hear the Matt Vince slander, even though he didn't have a very good day. The defense gave no, him was we nearly fault, nothing. The defense gave him nothing. And also, uh the officiating, yes, it was it was bad. They scored Five goals on their out of their eleven possible power plays. It could have been a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Um, but all these outlying factors, like oh, we only had two days rest. We didn't have Josh Byrne. We won back to back against Toronto, and no one said a freaking word. And we right. smoked them. It's not like we we won by a goal or two. We smoked those guys. Josh Byrne, he's great and everything. We won like all these games in our regular season. I mean, a lot of them were in overtime, but we won a lot of those games without Josh Byrne. These aren't excuses. Mm-hmm. The game two tagline was no excuses. And what are some a lot of these Bandit fans doing right now? They're, they're leaving excuses. I will tell you straight up, they got their asses kicked. Yep, I agree. Jake, what do you think, bud? I'll, t- I'll tell you this too. I look back at the Toronto series and I look over at this series and you watch a game like game one on – um on saturday even though it was close you know you knew it was going to be tight against colorado i mean it's just a given they play us super well and then you look at a game like today where we got our asses completely handed to us and then when you look back on the conference final series look at the offense that you went up against you went up against guys like tom schreiber stephen mm-hmm. keogh challen rogers our old friend Corey small we only let them put up Contained 13 them. goals in two games right now we've already given up 28 goals in two games to Colorado to an arguably uh, lesser skilled offense, but they still got so much talent, but they need to look back on how, what they did against Rochester and Toronto because they smoked. They broke the brakes off of both those teams in a matter of a week. I was telling, yeah. I mean, I was telling him on the car ride home, we're going to, we're going to sit around and let some fucking nine and nine team hang around. I mean, that's just pathetic. That's nothing but mediocrity and pathetic. Nine and nine is the definition of 500 and mediocrity. And just to add back in. Yeah, go ahead. We have the, without Josh, I hope Josh plays on Saturday. Really That'd be nice. Burns, yes. Really hope Burnsy plays Saturday. He's my guy. I love watching him play. Watching him play mm-hmm. so long. But we have the guys to win this series against Colorado. Mm-hmm. Without Josh Burn. We're missing players need, too. We don't need Josh Burn. To win a championship, Josh Burns should not make or break uh, how this roster plays. In my honest, he opinion. hasn't. He hasn't made or break our season. Even though, despite how good he is, he's been injured for a lot of the season. 
It's yep. it these secondary guys, your solvers, who are scratched for God knows why, and Kazemnikovs and Brad McCulley's to step up like they have in the season. Step mm-hmm. up on the grandest stage of them all. Because Brad was telling us on one of the interviews that we had with him that he didn't get the opportunity to lace up in the championship finals. He was watching it from the press conference and wanted to get out on the field and do something. Here's your opportunity. Right. Game three is coming up, but game two was inexcusable. It was, I mean, it started off great, and the Bannis have been seeming to do that against the Mammoth. They get off to fast starts. And the Mammoth have been known for, you know, getting off to slower starts yep. and then picking it back up. The, the Bandits, I mean, go back to the regular season game. Four to one after one, we go into the second quarter with a power play. We score four goals the rest of the game. We, we go to, we start off in game one, four nothing early, eight seven at halftime. We have to battle them the rest of the way home. This game, yep. one early. We ended up losing this game by essentially a touchdown, 16 to 10. I mean, the the Mammoth had this play from behind, you know, like scheme pretty much. The Bandits in the regular season were the team that would kind of hang around in the, you know, go down by one or two goals at halftime and then come back and win games. It seems like we've sort of taken what we remembered, through all the wrong things from 2022 that we've been doing, get off to fast starts, and then the train gets derailed in the third and fourth quarter, and we don't know what we're doing. Like, we're falling back into these old habits, and I, in my honest opinion, it starts with the players, but it also starts with Johnny Tavares. I mean, ever since he became the coach of this Buffalo Bandits team, he has a whopping record of 0-5 in Denver, Colorado. That is unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, we got to also realize that, you know, when things come to a, uh, an order and also we need to change things, I mean, you got to go from what you did in game one, change it a little bit in game two. Where was the hustle like we did in game one? Where was the determination like you did in game one? It was disappeared and all of a sudden just said we forgot how to do that we forgot how to do the pressure and the aggressive ways of how to get in their heads and get in their faces every time they had possession of the ball and we forgot to do that absolutely have no excuse not to do it in game right. two and what they have to do is get that back they have to get that confidence back right now their confidence is so low it's like oh here we go again we're going to relive what we did last year fuck that shit you know what you got to go out there and you got to scratch all that nonsense and go back to basics go back to what you guys are doing against rochester and toronto the previous series and look what you did you dominated on offense you kicked ass on defense goaltending was phenomenal face-offs were great everything was clicking find that Rhythm again. That's the only way you're going to win this game three and end this drought of 15 years going on possible now, 16 whole next season. season. Whole season, Tony, we battled through adversity. Burn out for a little bit. Kluche out for a little this bit. This year's different. Macaulay banged, Macaulay banged up a little bit. Tohoka Nanako banged up a little bit. Chase Frazier injured to start the year. Chris Kluche. Yep. Uh, and Frazier. Yep, I said yep. Kluche already. Yep. He didn't, he didn't mention Chris. Yep. Through adversity all year. Mm-hmm. And, we're notoriously known for not playing well against the Mammoth. This is the biggest battle of adversity that we've had. They need to realize that. They need to make sure that this – they need to realize this is fuel, this is fuel, fuel to the fire. Figure it out. Lock it down. Most importantly, you know, the refs, from what we've seen, they're not going to be on our side, so they got to keep their mouth no. shut. Lock it down. Yep. You know, lock it down. Shut your mouth. Figure it out. Find a way. Just get it done. All you got to do is that's win. That's all you can do. That's all what you can really do because win? of the fact that that's the way how it should be. You know what? As much as you want to say something, as much as you want to act on something, but don't be a fool doing it. You grind, you grind it out. You grind your teeth as much as you have to. Bite your tongue and just keep pushing forward and play the game. That's the only way you're going to win this game and get the people saying, hmm, well, the adversity and all the, the weight is on one side because of how they are just who they are or how it's ri- I don't want to say the mentioned word written but that's the way how I see it in the other ways I mean, is that the referees out it. there you call it how it is Tony four seems penalty. like but look at how it is it shows right on the stats 42 penalty minutes to only 16 guys I mean I don't want to say it but I got game. to it's the ref you know what listen the referees have got to keep it borderline fair and I'm not saying just pick one side and determine the game I'm saying call it fair if if you see a swoop kick that causes a trip, call it. If you see someone getting held around their neck, call it. Or, you gonna see, or with so many players being on the floor before the fact of transition switch, 
call it. That's how you got to maintain control and getting these two teams. I'm not saying us. I'm saying them as well under control. Cause if you allow one team to do whatever the hell they want, the other team's going to be like, well, what should we do? You're allowing this to happen, but why are we the ones being the bad guys here? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. We're in a, we're in this city now, or we don't deserve we're another in title. House, in the city of Buffalo. Buffalo. What yeah. in the God's we, name is going on? Can we just get into that a little bit? The NL well, sure. the announcers, they're, I don't want to, okay, I don't want this to be X-rated, so I'm not going to say D-riding, but I'm going to say absolute, oh. just like, I mean, just the love affair with the league yeah. and Mammoth and these announcers. I mean, the only thing that was on the NLL's Twitter after game one was 14,000 strong in Banditland, period. This time it that says, was it. congratulations to Colorado for having 10,000 fans. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, Okay, first That's of all, bad. it's not the loud house. They pump artificial noise. Their announcer's loud. They just and they blast, blast music. And they blast loud music. John mm. Gruber was basically bashing them on the radio broadcast today. How is it loud house? Like, if the fans aren't loud, they just blast music and their announcer's loud. Yeah. They're, and then he steals all of Chris Swenson's absolute gold lines. Like, we thought we heard him say, what's he got? And then defense. We heard him say all that stuff. Like, mm. um, you're, you're t- okay. Like, you beat us in the finals twice. Could be three times. It really, really could be based off how you, the bands freaking play today. They wouldn't beat the Riptide the way they play today. But no. just saying, um, like, yes, you, you do have those those titles. But don't try to steal Chris the Goat Swenson's swag. Like, don't don't try to take that stuff from him. And then shout out to Chris Swenson as well. You got some mm-hmm. idiot reporters on NLL Twitter uh, Is it the guy we got in an argument with? Yeah, us? we got into an <laughs> argument with this with this clown on Twitter the other day. His name's Michael Curvellis, I think. Okay. Dane Smith is 0-3 in the NLL final series. He's been so bad since quarter one of game one, has to be said. Shout out to Chris Swenson for saying 100% bad take on this tweet. And uh, shout out Christian Del Bianco. I have to go to this. I saw that I have to go too. to this tweet here. Christian Del Bianco said, God damn it, Michael. Help yourself for once and stop saying ignorant crap. You think one of the greatest defenders in NLL history isn't going to make adjustments when someone scores four on his team in 11 minutes? I mean, hmm. you have these idiots that ride on the mammoth wagon everywhere they go. Hmm. These announcers are the most biased I've ever seen. The refs are biased. And, Tony, on this show, we are absolutely biased towards the Buffalo Bandits. That goes without question. The show, the show is called Bandit Land Boulevard. But – We're going to be real with you. We're going to shoot the real stuff with you. I'm not going to Mm -hmm. tell you 16 to 10 loss, tell you that it's all sunshine and rainbows because it's it's not. No. No. After game one, because all you had to do is go 500 the rest of the way. Oh, guess what? Now you have to go 1 0 the rest of the way. Um, I'm not going to piss on your leg and tell you it's raining. I'm I'm Mm -mm. just not going to. I'm going to tell you the real stuff. And if you don't like it, you know what? You don't have to watch us anymore. But I'm going to. Or don't listen. Or, yeah, or listen. We're going to tell you the real stuff. Because mm-hmm. we are fans, we are doing the fan thing. We want to tell you what we like, like Max Adler's performance today, twenty-one of thirty. Um, Good job. We're going to tell you the stuff that we didn't like: the passing, in the offensive zone, the taking mm. shots. Uh, Chris Cloutier, short-handed, going, uh, which ends up missing the net completely and going down the field to, to lead to a power play goal. The lack of in, adjustments by John Tavares. instead of killing off the penalty, working the ball around, trying to score a short-handed goal. We tell you the things that we like, and we tell you the things that we don't like. What we don't like is the, I mean, we all like a good underdog story. A 9-9 and team going to the finals, I mean, it's pretty cool if you look at it from that perspective. But, I mean, mm. just looking at these announcers and it's the mighty Zed Williams. And then whenever Dane Smith scores, oh, they call him the great Dane in Buffalo. Uh, yeah, he scored again and whatever. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Look at the heartbreak that we've dealt for four out of the last six seasons. Mm-hmm. Take another championship loss like this, especially Can't. when we have a very solid game one, but then we, of course, we lay an egg. It's always tough for us to play in Colorado, especially when John Tavares has an old 0-5 track record in Pump Colorado. Pump fake crowd noise and shit. But <laughs> as I wanted to say earlier, what a better place to win a championship and to get your confidence back and to figure it out like our hometown, Buffalo, New York, back in Bandit. That's the one thing that's given me the slightest bit of confidence going into game three. Yeah, we can't, we can't like let this game be, it's all over for us now. And we can't think about what happened last year. Like we said before, 
I mean, yes, Josh Byrne would be a huge asset right now, but again, his health is more important and we want to see him back at hundred percent. We also got to realize that without burn, we have still succeeded in the regular season to now. And unfortunately due to the circumstances of how we played in Colorado. And yes, again, we are still now Owen five in the last five meetings in the ball arena. We got to stop making excuses for saying, Hmm, we, we just can't win here. So what's the purpose? The purpose is you're getting, whatever amount of dollars to play here, you're going to represent a city that everyone that loves you. And you just be thankful that God has graced you with the skills of the sport of lacrosse. And you go out there and you make the best of it. That out, that outing that you just did was not the best as what we've seen all year round. And it's no excuse to say, Hey, we were, uh, we're not satisfied with our game. I wouldn't be satisfied with this outcome, especially game two's outcome. And you got to go there and say, Hey, all right, take a deep breath. Let's get back to basics. Let's think about what we can do to fix this now. And that means go back to what we did against Rochester and Toronto. And once you figure that out and you play the game, play your style of lacrosse against Colorado, I promise you folks, it'll be a much happier outcome if they go back to that style. Absolutely. And we hope that it does this Saturday. What I've been saying is all it takes is that one title, the first title since 2008 to create this dynasty mantra. You win this one, the floodgates will open, guarantee it. This this window of championship lacrosse is going to be open. I mean, it's it's going to be open for a long, long, long time, and everybody knows that. If the right. Panthers remain in the National Lacrosse League, they are a legitimate shot at winning it all. I mean, just I mean, every single year they outside of a couple outlier years like 2017, where they really had to look at themselves in the ver- in the mirror. Do you want to mm-hmm. part ways with these vets, or do you want to start with the youth movement? They went with the youth <laughs> movement. They, they were starting to kick players out like like uh, like like Mark Stainhouse and Calum Crawford. Calum Crawford. And they really started to kick out guys like Craig England and Mitch mm-hmm. Jones. They sent them away to bring in the youth movement. And and that 2016 team was a miracle run. Nobody really had them going to the finals, but winning it all either. 2019, they had a nice taste of humble pie by those Calgary Roughnecks and um, mm-hmm. Sean Evans. The ball hog himself had no answers for Christian <laughs> Del Bianco. Uh, 2022, I don't even want to say a humbling loss, just epic choke. I mean, that was just a choke job of epic proportions. You take your poison which game that they choked harder, game two or game three. Blowing a two-goal lead in game four. I mean, no, mm. blowing a two-goal lead in the fourth quarter of game two. Mm. Um, or blowing a three-goal lead in the first half of game three. You, mm. you take your poison, uh, which, was, which was worse, but – Tony, we got to start talking about these referees, man. I mean, is we, yeah. sound like, we sound like broken records, but it's time to get cool. these fat guys in <laughs> the zebra outfits some LASIK surgery, a new prescription, because Jesus Christ, these guys suck. Like, it's this, that may have been the worst officiated game I have ever watched in my entire life. I just couldn't believe the fact that every time I posted on Facebook and Instagram and stuff, I – I basically said, where are the whistles not being blown when you literally see the call standing right in front of your face? I don't care how tall you are, how fat you are, or whatever you got to do to read the book. You better go back to basics and knowing about the fact of what the rules of the game are, and you got to make the right calls. you got to be 50-50. That means for both Colorado and for Buffalo's sake, you got to make it fair. It you can't you cannot control the game to make it feel like it's like, oh well, these guys are the stronger ones or these guys just don't deserve it. No, you have got to stay fair, fair line, borderline. I mean, if you're stuck in the middle between north and south, you better be staying right in the middle and just controlling the outcome of what it is and keeping things fair. That's all we expect we don't expect you to make miracles we don't expect you to do um show favoritism we just want it fair and the buffalo fans have had obviously clear view of this game today of what it was but we also got to understand that the players themselves get frustrated and it's like what more can we possibly do to not be in the box for something ridiculously called and that's another thing that's why they got so many minutes this game is 42 and then again um 
like I said, the frustration kicked in. Steve Priol got upset. He tried to shoot the ball down the rink, but instead he shoots it right at a Colorado mammoth. And guess what? Automatic. Boom. Get to the box. It's unsportsmanlike. You got to keep your heads, especially as being the captain of the team. You've got to set an example for your other guys going out there. You can't be like that. You can't show being pissed off and just say, screw it. And just let the game go out of hand. You've got to maintain, you've got to get them under control and calm them down and say the fact that, Hey guys, I know we have everybody against us. We have the referees against us. We have this team obviously against us, but we cannot let that break us. So we have got to keep playing the game and we got to stay focused, but obviously it didn't show. We ended up losing game two, and now we have to come back home for game number three this Saturday to decide who's going to be the champion this year. And I'm praying to God right now saying that give us an answer. I know they don't help during championships, but something to say, don't talk back. Just play the game and go. That's it. Play the way you know how to play. We've seen what these boys could do the whole year. Just play the way you know how to play. Keep your composure. And then going back, to, going back to the referees. Obviously, they're human. Okay, we all get we we all know that they're human. But pound let's humans. be let's be real. <laughs> if if that if that call is being made right in front of you, and you don't call, you have to make that call. And if it, and if you're calling something, you better make sure it's the right call. And I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if you remember this, Tony. But Chev, you can correct me if I'm mm-hmm. wrong. I'm probably gonna miss saying no. Go ahead, like that. I'm not sure if you remember, Tony, but there was a game, home game against Philadelphia. We were without Josh Byrne, without the overtime game. game. This is when Dane wanted yes. it. Yep. Dane put the team on his back. Yep. Was it Lee Smith or Chase Frazier, they had his helmet knocked off. And when he got hit, his helmet knocked off. Uh, I think it was Chase. I think you're absolutely Dane right. Dane Smith getting punched in the face. That was it. Yep. He got punched yeah. in the face. And then they call him for what? Illegal cross? No, they call him two minutes for roughing. Two minutes for roughing. And the ref's standing oh my right God. there. And I'm. I'm I was literally and standing. The replay up. showed that and the I, Philly player butt ended him with a stick in the chin. Yeah. What are we doing? I just, I don't. Like, what I, are we not what we are doing. What are they watching? <laughs> exactly. And by what are we doing? I mean, reps, what are you guys watching? Well, they exactly. Just, they got to stay consistent, even though they probably won't. But then it all goes back to keeping your composure. You know, they're going to suck. So just shut your mouth. Just play the way you know how to play. And that should be so, for success. I mean, when we went into, I keep calling it 716, but that was what it used to be. When we went to the Southern right. Tier 3 um, restaurant, when we walked in, we saw some guy, because we walked in right around halftime, because I was getting out of work at like 4.30, and the guy's mm. like, he's just standing outside of the restaurant. He's like shaking his head. And we're like, he's like, dude, it's still like 8 to 5 right now. And we're like, what do you think is going to happen? He's like, I don't know, but I don't want a game three. I don't want the same thing to happen or the same thing that happened last year to happen this year. And right. like, well, we got another half to prove ourselves. Those second half adjustments that have been working all season long, like in the regular season, despite, you know, a lot of those being in overtime, I don't care. I, I, like I said before, I don't care how ugly it is. As long as you win the game, win the series, win the championship, mm-hmm. it's been working all season long. And that now this time we took one step forward and like 3000 steps backwards. Colorado mm. did what they do so well against us, and that's adjusting to our offense. You saw how great Dane Smith was early in game one. You knew that they were going to be ready for him in, in game two. They adjust to our offense so well, and that's what Johnny needs to do to Colorado's offense. Um, the head coach for Colorado, Pat something. I can't remember his last name. Yeah, the guy looks like uh, Pat Coyle. Pat Coyle. Yeah. Or Doyle. Or is it job. Doyle or Coyle? One of the two. Pat Coyle. He does such a good job with – with um, you know, quarter by quarter adjustments, first half, second half adjustments. Giant Devaris needs to needs to figure it out. He needs to take a page out of his playbook and do some solid adjustments for himself against Colorado because that's going to be the key. They that's going to be the key for Game Three. They need to adjust to Colorado's offense because they proved that they can go off. And you are you know that um, Colorado, whether we're with whether we're with Josh Byrne or if we still have to be without him again. You know for sure that they're going to do whatever they can to to take out our top goal scorers. So it's going to be a battle, but Giant needs to be ready. He needs to make sure yeah, that he's adjusted, that he needs to be ready to go. What I think of that, too, when you just mentioned with Johnny Tavares, I think now with seeing how weak we are and we've seen the mistakes being made defensively, who do you guys think that should be sitting down for this final game and maybe throw him a curveball and seeing maybe if – 
bring up like McKenzie or other defenders that know what they can do and oh. see what they can do. Bryce Sweeting, thank you for your contributions. Get the hell off my TV. Sorry. Well, Bryce that's... Sweeting, you, I called him the flat-footed monster today. Uh, get Almost kind of like the old Mitch Snoo, didn't it? Yep. Get the hell off my TV, Bryce Sweeting. Thank you for your contributions. I don't want to see you in game three. Sorry. This, this Did anyone great. else see about Ethan O'Connor as well? Oh, my God. Is that another guy that we do mention to say Possibly sit down for this one? Adam Bomberry cross checking someone in the back of the head. I mean, it was all bad. Did we mention Dylan Robinson yet? Oh my God, sixteen pims today. That that's got to stop. He need. I know he's a young kid, and I know he's got to learn, but he needs to keep his composure. But about Bomberry, he, I don't see him ever leaving the defensive core because he know. is bringing that Robinson. toughness in. And I love how Justin Martin's adjusted to. A lot of people saying, oh, he's outmatched by Zed Williams. He stayed toe-to-toe -to -toe with him as best as he possibly could. You cannot give that guy the credit, the uncredibility that how much he has persisted on defensively because I think Justin Martin, as small as he is out there, he really, on my view, did so good on defense, and especially like Spanger and uh, with Priolo as well. But again – we got, we got to catch him straight There's two, play there's game two players. Really. We know Spanger, when he gets loose on a breakaway, we need to – Use him going fast. Uh, yeah. In game three, he did make one mistake though. Yeah, he well, he allowed Robinson to walk right he in and score. The only one. He wasn't the only one. I mean, I, I will say that Everybody the, six, the sixteen today. penalty minutes from the guy that we called up from the to the active roster once Josh Byrne got sent down is completely unacceptable. Like you are, I, would say. Acting, I mean, it's a different position, but you're acting as as his understudy basically. Right. Fill in. You don't want you to throw those shoes. Sorry to uh, cut you guys off, but you know who would actually be a surprise if we what we would do if we actually changed up the roster at the last second to bring up people that we have not played yet and actually him. What about Joel Taylor? I we heard that he we have never was, yeah. seen him yet, and his veteran skills could possibly be that little spark that Being we need in front of the net, to, so bring, we to bring us back to that winning ways. And I think you know what. I think now would be a perfect time for Johnny T to actually say, hmm, I think I've held him back long enough. Tony, time to unleash him, the beast. We've seen him once, and that was when we were in Rochester. And he scored a goal. Yeah. And that was always – And on top of it, on top of it, the way he just plays as a Saskatchewan rush, did we all forget about where he played from? You put him and the Robinson boys together? Jesus, that's a team itself that did such damage to us in what, 2016? Yep. Yeah, dude, that was a guy who played with fucking. Oh, he was in against Colorado. Colorado. They hate sass. Yep. I was telling him when we were walking in the Southern Tier, I said, Saskatchewan always has their number. How can they switch the entire. Alex season? Bouquet owns the Colorado Mammoth. Four That's bands it. legend. Alex yep. Bouquet. Yep, he does. So, so why not do it to them now? That's right. It's a good idea. I mean, I don't want to make. I don't know. After a 16 10 loss, you're kind of in a tough spot. Like, if you were to lose this game 14, 12, 15, okay. 14, I mean, you don't want to make drastic changes, but you beat them 13, 12 in game one. You lost to them 16 to 10 in game two. It's the time mm -hmm. to make drastic changes. But because the series is tied, it's technically not lost. But, I mean, like I said, and this, has been, this is the term I've been seeing floating around Twitter and Facebook, and I have taken a mental break from Facebook because like, you got some of these casuals that are blaming that Matt Vince for this garbage. Complete. Mm -hmm. I mean, just disregard them. Whoever's blaming Matt Vince. But the thing that's been going around is deja vu. This is the same story, different year. Aerosmith says it's the same old song and dance. Dude. But it's time for us to rewrite that story. I don't know. I mean, sure can. Yeah, but, but different it's ending. up to them to prove to me and fully give me the confidence to really go on here and say, I'm confident that you will win game three. Something either has to be said in a press conference, something mm -hmm. has to be tweeted out, something has to do. You have to show me the confidence in the locker room. And I'm not saying like do some Virginia tech and her Sandman type stuff, but like show me something that may, will make me believe that yes, I'm 110% confident that this team that has been owned been getting destroyed since 2006 by this Colorado mammoth team, that I am mm. confident that this team will go in and win game three. Cause right now I don't have that. If I'm being completely honest, I, I don't have the overall confidence. I, but at the same point, I know it's not over. Right. Well, you know what I should say is like, do what Mark Messier says and said, we're not losing this game. I'm going to score a hat trick. I, I want to see somebody like that say, I'm going to be the guy that steps up and I want to be the hero. I want that to happen this game coming up against Saturday. And on top of it, just be like, listen, 
Do you guys want to be the known as the team that just makes it and doesn't win at all? I would hate to feel like that. And I would hate to have that against uh, like a burden on my wall says, Hey, you've been Eastern conference champions for so many years. Kind of like saying about the Buffalo bills, winning four time AFC championship, but right. cannot win back the big to game. Back to back That's, to back. Yep. What does that tell you? What does that tell you as a fan? Oh Buffalo yeah. They're a great team that makes it, but they can't win it. Yeah, Bullshit. You. They can do everything Bullshit, because we've won it four times, but we can win a fifth if we actually want to. I'm Go ahead, Jake. I'm sorry. I, cut you off. From, I still have the rally towel from 2016 that says we want five. I still got that hang up. As yeah. Well. I mean, come on, guys. Seriously. We we're, want we're, five for years. 2023, we're still looking for five. Come on, guys. Yep. It's this time. Out. Tony, it's we got time. about three minutes to go. Hit us with the sponsor real quick. Yep, I'd just like to say thank you to the Mitchell's Tavern at 734 uh, Sheridan Drive up in Tonawanda for the best beef in Wick in town. Uh, don't forget to mention your boys, Tony LaMonica, a.k.a. Boxhead 98 TL, and also over there, Trevor Hauer. And now hopefully we'll have a third guy as another host, as that's Jake Hauer. Um, also, we'd like to thank our YouTube viewers uh, to give us the like and subscribe. And now that you know who what we look like, we want to yep. see if you guys like to hear us in on Bandit Land Boulevard and all about Bandit, Buffalo Bandits across. We also would like to thank those listeners that listen to us on Spotify.fm, Anchor as well. Uh, give us that five-star rating and uh, keep listening in on all your devices, your phone, your tablet, your, your radio station, no, no demand, whatever. But we'd like to hear from you. And guys, don't forget, hit those questions for us. We will answer them as best as we can for you. Yep, that's it. Perfectly said. 16-10, final from Ball Arena. Going to game three this Saturday. Not I think over. They said, I think they said 7 o'clock face-off. Uh, 7.30. 7.30 face-off. So we got that prime time. Yep. Bandits right Mammoth. There, boys. Game three, game three. Saturday, seven, June 3rd, 7.30 p.m. I will be there. Our preview, yep. our preview will be probably coming out later in the week. Um, huge, Thursday, Friday. Huge game coming up. But – this game, I mean, if you react the same way you did when you got your, I mean, asses kicked 18 now play pissed. by by Toronto, they came back and won X amount in a row, what, six in a row, including the playoff game since that game? Yes, yes. You come back and you, you do half of what Make you did after that, a statement. you win the championship. Just remember how today feels. Remember how last year during game two and game, and, uh, during games two and games three felt. Remember right. how it felt during those two losses last year and this loss today. Because yep. just like last year, one game one where one went away from a championship, they did not get it done. This year's the same thing. One went away from a championship, did not get it done game two. Remember how you felt for both of these series. Game two today and game two and game three last year. Yep. Remember yep. how you felt? Play pissed off. Go play lacrosse the way that you know how to play. And just find a way to win. Real quick before we sign off, um, I was telling him on the car ride back, if you told us in 2019 after that humbling yet soul-crushing overtime loss in game two to the Roughnecks to lose the championship, if you were to tell me in 2022 and in 2023 that Bannis would win game one in both of those series, would you take that? I'd say absolutely hell yes, 110%. It's about finishing the job now. You have it. There's no more wiggle room. Oh, maybe next year, maybe next year they got it. No, win it now. If you don't win it now, when are you going to win it? We said the same thing last year. Guess what? We have it's a your time, boys. Coming adversity. We're doing stuff we didn't do before last season. We got it. So I think with that said, we need him with the three final words to sign off. Ready? Ready? Let's. Let's. Go. 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 Bandit. Bandit. Let's go. Let's go.